So, um, but San Diego was the beginning of a downward spiral for me, a, a catapult into, to me, a place of darkness. Mm -hmm. I was introduced to crystal methamphetamine at that bar. Mm -hmm. And I saw the girls did, do it. I was a cocktail waitress for three weeks, man, three weeks. And I watched these girls. And I watched how hard I was working, and I watched how hard they were working, and I saw the money that I was making, and I saw the money that they were making. And I said, this is ridiculous. So I went, I marched myself down to the uh, police department, the vice squad, the San Diego Police Department, because you have to have a license to be a topless dancer. Mm. Like you have to have a license to catch a fish or a license to sure. drive a car. You have to be a licensed topless dancer. And I got par my permit. And I became a topless dancer in a bar in Point Loma in San Diego. And I began to make more money than I'd ever seen in my life. So as a dancer, you have to have a stage name. Nobody really calls you by your real name. So I created the name Pepper because I used to watch that show. Um, and I loved it. And I thought it was, a, it was a great name. So they gave me the name Pepper. And Pepper was born. And within that, I could retreat. And all of those things that that little girl experienced, all of those things that were taken from me, kept from me, withheld from me, all those things that I thought I had been robbed of, got a chance to be pushed back. And I really had a chance to create an entire persona that was bold and it was brash. And Pepper would, she'd play pool in between sets with the cigarette hanging out of her mouth. She would do shots of wild turkey with beer chasers with the guys in the bar. I mean, she was the one that everybody wanted to hang out with. You know, all the dancers would hang out with Pepper because she can introduce them to all the men. And the men wanted to hang out with Pepper so she could introduce them to the, to the, the other dancers. I loved it because it was attention. It was attention. And the thing that I had wanted, love, relationship, was it was coming now. It was coming. And I loved it. Pepper. Was there a part of the back of your mind, though, where if my mom could see me now, oh, she yeah. would suppress this girl with all this potential. Oh, yeah and I'm gonna show the Midwest, Iowa, what it's really about. You bring up a very good point, because I told you I was raised in church. I knew everything I was doing was wrong. As a matter of fact, I refused to dance on Sundays because Sunday's the day you're supposed to go to church. Mm -hmm. It's the Sabbath. You're supposed to rest on the Sabbath, right? But I also, on the flip side of that, I was like, nobody's gonna tell me what to do anymore. Nobody's gonna hold me back anymore. You're not gonna keep me from experiencing everything that life has to offer. And so I went for it. And one day, um, I noticed, I told you, I, I noticed all the girls, um, they either did cocaine or meth. Everybody smoked weed. I wasn't much of a weed person because I never wanted to do anything that would slow me down. And so uh, someone introduced me to crystal meth. And the very first time I tried it, I was hooked. Hmm. And it just became, I, I barely ate or drank anymore. Um, I just smoked, drank, and did meth and danced. I mean, it was my life from sun up to sundown, from the time the bar opened to the time the bar closed. Customers would bring food in and make sure that I ate it, but Pepper was unstoppable, unstoppable. Any man, any customer, you had professional athletes coming in, actors coming in, all under the guise of we don't want anybody to know we were here, they all wanted to be with Pepper. And so it was, um, it was fun. It was a lot of the attention, I soaked it all up, but on the inside, there was always that knowing of, th this is not what you were born for. Mm 